I'm going to give you a little tutorial here on basically how to make butter and how not to whip cream. So we use double cream a lot in cookery. Double cream is the one that you can whip up until it's thick enough that we can then pipe it, put it on top of desserts, etc. All right. But I'm often telling students not to over whip it. If you over whip something, the cream in particular, um, it will split and actually become butter. So I'm actually going to over whip this on purpose to show you how to make butter. So I've just got the double cream in a bowl. Oop, turn it on. That'd help. There we go. We'll start whisking it. Trying to keep it in the bowl. So in a minute I'm going to stop when it gets to the correct thickness to, that will be good for piping. I'm just going to whisk it. So we're trapping air, which will then begin to thicken the cream, going everywhere. And it's starting to thicken a little. Just at this point you've got to be very, very careful because this is when Now that's the perfect consistency for if I was to pipe, want to pipe my cream um, onto, onto a dessert, okay? That's the perfect, should just drop off the spoon and be perfect, okay? Now, so quickly, you can take it too far and I'll show you what happens. So, so when you over whip, whip it, it's getting thicker, you can feel it getting thicker, and then it's too thick really now, and you can start to see it gets duller and duller and duller, and now it's, it's gone far too far now, I can't, and you'll start to see in a second that it will start to separate, and the fats will start to come together, and as the fat comes together, a liquid will come out, okay, which is a sort of milk residue. Now, you think, oh, this is so very quickly, you can start to see that it's kind of going grainy and actually changing colour. It's becoming yellower. And let me just stop a second. Very, very quickly, can you start to see, I'm just going to stir this around just to get the, uh, so you've got the, you can start to see the liquid that's coming off of that, okay? So this cream is now beyond becoming cream but I'm going to whisk it a little bit more and turn it into butter this could be tricky this could go everywhere oh. making a bit of a mess of the kitchen here better if I'd done it in the electric whisk, I think. Can't go any slower, that's the problem. Right, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take this out because I'm actually spraying this everywhere. And I'm just going to get a wooden spoon, actually I'm probably do it with this. And you can start to bring this together. If I'd actually... In fact, what we'll do is stop the video a second, I'll get the bigger whisk mixer and we'll... do the disaster of coating the entire kitchen in sort of buttermilk. Um, we're now going to come back and put it in this bigger mixer. And if you can see in here, what's happening is the fat is coming together and you can easily see that butter is being formed. The lump will get bigger and bigger. And hopefully, we'll, there we go, look. So we've, we've gone from double cream to our butter quite quickly. What you can then do then is pour off the buttermilk. Now you often buy buttermilk actually in, in the shops to make scones and things out of. So pour that off. Okay. And there's our butter. Okay, so what you do now, if you're making this, you keep squeezing out the buttermilk. You need to get rid of the buttermilk because that will go sour very quickly, okay? 
So you need to get rid of that. And then you can rinse actually your butter in cold water and then add some salt to it. But what you could do is keep mixing it and keep pouring off any buttermilk that you can get. So simple thing of, if you over whisk your double cream, you're gonna end up with butter, all right? Um, in a moment, I'm gonna finish this off and then I'm gonna show you how to make some flavored butters that we can use all summer long for our barbecues, roasting meats, etc. Okay, but I'm just gonna get rid of any of this last buttermilk out here and then we'll come back and I'll show you how to flavor it. Okay, we've got some, so we've got our softened butter here. This was actually our homemade butter. Right. Now this has no flavouring in it, so you, you can either buy salted butter or unsalted butter. At the moment this is unsalted. So add some salt, and because we're going to make a flavoured butter, I'm going to add pepper. Okay. Now this one is probably the most popular butter you can use for sort of so many things. This is going to be a garlic and parsley butter. Um, so I can mix salt and pepper in. Then I'm going to need quite a lot of garlic. If you're making garlic butter, it's got a taste of garlic. So maybe five or six, four or five, whatever, crushed cloves of garlic go in. It's quite large cloves. And then I've also got that in there. Oops. Nice and garlicky. Now this will be perfect. You can actually, I'm going to show you how to actually keep this so you can put it in the freezer and uh, it can be used all through the summer. You could actually put it um, on the skin of a chicken and roast it. It could go on to um, bar uh, steaks off the barbecue. It can actually be used uh, to go on um, corn on the cob, things like that. Instead of just putting ordinary butter on, you put your nice garlic butter on the top. So I'll just scrape that, that bit can go in as well. Put the garlic in there. Then I've got some chopped parsley that I've chopped in my little machine. A lot of chopped parsley, that goes in, that gives it colour and flavour. And then I've got a few chives, which I wouldn't normally put, but I saw these and thought, I'll just chop a few chives can go in. And so you've got chives are on the onion family, so we've got the garlic and we've now, which are also part of the onion family. They go in there. And then you mix it all up, okay? Incorporate it until you've got a lovely flavoured butter. Now over here, while I'm mixing this, you can also say I'm gonna make some other flavoured butters. So this one is going to be a Thai flavoured butter. I've got coriander I've just picked from the greenhouse. Some chilies, gonna finely chop those. Again, crushed garlic. And for those of you, I'm not sure if you know what that is. That's a piece of lemongrass, okay? You can buy that in any supermarket. It's quite woody and quite tough, but what you need to do to, to prepare your lemongrass, probably safer on a wooden board, is to probably chop off the end, which is a bit kind of, chop both ends off, get rid of those, and then basically bash it like mad, flies across the kitchen with a rolling pin, okay? This breaks down some of the fibres, okay? also releases the gorgeous lemon flavour. And then to go into your butter, you can either put it in the chopper or chop it as finely as you can, okay? So fine, tiny bits, but it might be easier to just put it all in the chopper, little mini chopper and chop it all up, okay? So very fragrant. So you've got the coriander, crushed garlic, very finely chopped chilies, and in with butter. Then I'm going to make one which is perfect to go with chicken or fish. I'm going to put some lemon zest, just the very outer bit of the lemon zest, some fresh thyme and some fresh parsley together. That's perfect for going underneath the skin of a chicken. You can put it in and then roast the chicken. Um, so that's another butter, or, or great to go on fish as well. And then I found these this morning actually in Lidl. These are sun-dried tomatoes. Okay, you can buy them in oil or these are just dried. So I'm going to chop these finely and maybe mix with some garlic and some parsley um, and so and probably a little bit of paprika and have like a Spanish butter. Um, so, actually the oven is pinging off here, just press the button, that'll pin the button. Right, so you mix this all together until you've got it all incorporated and you've got it even, the parsley and the garlic evenly distributed in your butter. And then all you do is you have a piece of cling film, 
I'm going to take about a third of this because I've got quite a lot of butter. And just imagine I've got that all mixed in. So the, you can use this all summer long. Great. And I'm, next week I'm going to show you how to make maybe some burgers and some other things that we can incorporate our herbed butter in. So incorporate whatever you want. Now, so to shape our, our herb butter, oops, place it onto the cling film like so. Squish it out a little bit. Then roll it up in the cling film. And then when you've got it rolled, you can kind of shape it a bit longer like that. And then you can roll it like that, backwards and forwards. And then if you chill that in the fridge till it's hard, then you can slice it into little pieces and then they can go in a box or something and go in the freezer, okay? Or maybe freeze them flat and then when they're frozen you can put them. So that's your perfect, or you can just keep it in the fridge like these, this, okay? So I'm gonna make a few of those and then I'll come back and maybe show you a couple of the others I've made. Right, just to conclude on our flavoured butters. So there is the garlic butter, garlic, parsley, and I've put some chives in it as well, but lots of garlic. This is the one I made for the Thai one. It looks a bit strange at the moment, but I'll mold that. That's got the lemongrass, coriander, red chilies all chopped up. I chopped it all in the mini chopper and then added it in. This is the one which I think will be perfect with chicken or fish, thyme, just the lemon zest. Remember, just take the very outer bit. Don't go into the white because that's the bitter pith, okay? Um, I put some parsley in there as well. So thyme, parsley, lemon. And then this is the new one I've just kind of done, which is sun-dried tomatoes that I chopped up and some smoked paprika and a few chives because I had some chives. I found the best way to actually mix it all together is to just do it with your hands, okay? And then you can mold it. What I'm gonna show you in your next video is how we're gonna take our flavored butter um, and we're gonna place it inside a chicken breast um, and a slightly different take on a chicken tea Kiev, we're going to just do it with a crunchy topping on the top. Okay, so that'll be our next video. Okay, the herb butter. Uh, just to finish it off, I uh, so I re recap. I rolled it up in the cling film, popped it into the freezer to chill it, and I've just taken it out, unwrapped, and then sliced the pieces. So these are nice and hard, and placed them in containers. Um, and then I'm going to label them, and then these are going to go back in the freezer to be to be uh, stored and then you should be able to just lift a piece out when you want it so we've got the garlic butter lots of that one this is the lemon thyme butter this is the thai one with the um uh, red chilies lemon grass garlic and coriander and this is kind of what i'm calling my spanish one which is the uh, sun-dried tomatoes and it's got uh, smoked paprika in it, smoked spicy paprika, it's got a little bit of spice with it. So these are all gonna get uh, popped in the freezer and then these are perfect for when the weather improves, which is not great today, and we all want to have barbecues and stuff. So when it stops raining, we're ready to have barbecues. And then these can be put on chicken, steaks, burgers, etc. Probably show you that next week.